532, and I would like to call the uh, Capital Planning Committee meeting to order. And it looks like we have a quorum. And uh, first item of business is the minutes, but uh, Amy, our recording secretary, wasn't here for the last meeting. So I guess we don't have any minutes. And I didn't know if Carolyn was working on those or not. Uh, Linda, do you know uh, if she- No, is? I don't know. She's gonna be a uh, half hour late too. She won't be here till about five, I, I guess. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll have to. I did just send minutes for the, and I know it's late, but I just realized I, because I wasn't at the last one, I did just send the minutes for March 14th. Just now? Yeah. Okay. We defer approving okay. those until the next meeting, then, and we'll just move on. Well, thank you, Amy. We really appreciate what you're doing for us on the committee. That's. Okay. Um, above and beyond, so it's appreciated. Okay, uh, I, I guess what I'd like to start off with is, uh, I know, Linda, you sent me an email and you're talking about this uh, $100,000 for next year if we go ahead and approve everything as is. Uh, I, what, that wasn't quite clear to me. I was wondering if you could go into that a little bit more. Okay, um, we had the... Uh... Let me get that. I'm going to get mine up on this my other screen here, so I can look. Yeah, we kind of have this this policy of how much we borrow in a fiscal year, which we like to line up with how much we have in the budget to pay on borrowing within the levy within a fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Now, if we if we um, exceed that amount, what we're going to and we we can we can exceed that amount. But what we're doing, we're um, having to extend out the borrowing further because our, our budget of what we can pay each other remains the same each year. We pay about $350,000 each year, paying down our prior borrowings. So amazing. if we borrow $350,000, you see we stay about even um, year after year. If we exceed that, well, we're still only going to be able to pay down $350,000. And the other hundred will get spread into the future one way or another, just like when you don't pay enough off on your home equity loan, you go, oh, I'll pay it next month and we'll just push it on down the road a little bit. So I did want to say that that was an option um, and uh, so that the borrowing within the levy amounts could get covered because I think between uh, what was approved at the fall town meeting for borrowing within the levy was a little over 350,000. And what's in that category, because I really just chose the smaller things. I couldn't even think about putting something like the larger trucks for DPW in that because they was exceeded by so much, but we have almost $200,000 worth of uh, items. That's the four school ones, the drainage project and uh, a third of the mower. They're almost 200,000, which would mean our borrowing within the levy allocation would be 450,000, uh, which doesn't mean we would actually be borrowing the 450,000. We often find that we don't borrow the full amount. Um, so I, I'm just putting that out there. I just wanted you to know that we've been trying to stay in the amount that we pay back each year, but uh, it is an option to exceed that and, and hope that things get, um, get worked out differently down the line. Did that make more sense, Paul? Yeah, what you're saying is what we pay down is what the new new projects that we can take on, and we want to keep that level. We try and keep it level, but okay. we're 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 doing pretty well. There was a time when um, we, without borrowing anything this year, we had the 350 stacked up for the next three or four years, and we're really closer. We're really only about a year or two out, so we are doing better than we used to. Um, mainly because um, the finance committee. Uh, approved increasing those budget line items. So we're up 150,000 more on that line than we used to be uh, paying within the within the levy. Because this, this means of borrowing has pretty much fully replaced what used to be the capital stabilization fund, which was about, I think was about the same amount, about 300, 350,000 that we, that had was allocated to the, to the capital stabilization fund. And so we've replaced that by boosting up um, the borrowing within the levy. So it's kind of our, our new tool. Okay, great. That, yeah, that helps a lot. Anyone else, any questions on that or any clarifications that you need? 
Okay, and also, Linda, I hate to put you on the spot again, but uh, any changes or any uh, in the uh, funding sources or any thoughts, further thoughts about that too? Uh, is the um, the highway plow truck sander was it? I think Scott, it was there at three hundred fifty or three hundred seventy five thousand before, and he he said I needed I should, needed to boost that up to four hundred thousand as a total. Um, the water and sewer uh, really need to stay within the water and sewer amounts. Uh, Scott felt comfortable with the allocation of the mower, the mower, <laughs> the mower between the three. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, but as far as the funding sources that I listed last time, they're the same this time. Um, the, the idea is that we take the smaller items and do them, them in the le within the levy. Otherwise, if we put a large item in there, it, it eats up the whole fund. So right. we just get you, more for it. Looks like the way you set this up, it, it's a workable plan. Yeah, we, we, we can move columns. This is just, this is my, um, you know, this is how I lay it out. You're the capital committee. You want to put things in different columns. You certainly, certainly can. Um, well, my only uh, concern, I think, question for everyone on the committee and, and for you too, is, as you know, we got those two that are contingent upon a uh, debt exclusion vote and what's everyone's thoughts about that? I mean, I don't see another, where another funding source for it. Um, it's one of those things, there's a good chance that it will, it might pass through town meeting, but fail at the ballot. Which has happened many Now, and this isn't just to go back a little bit. Um, I just a few comments. Um, I have a concern about um, what we have been doing lately is borrowing from like the water and sewer, and that's great that we borrow in the and it's the it's paid out of water and reserve, sewer reserves, mm -hmm. but we're starting to get up higher and higher, and those exactly. payments coming back, I mean, it's, it's been really easy for us to just to push it off and have them pay it. Right. And so it's more items, but I, I'm thinking those reserves are going to start getting smaller and smaller. And, and I think we need to be careful with that. So is that just a comment there to say, you know, it, it, we have to watch out for what the total is that we're borrowing on those. Um, and then my other comment is, we have been putting more money into making payments um, out of the operating budget to pay on um, our debt. But um, I, I didn't really think, I didn't want to replace the money that we were doing going into the capital stabilization. I wanted, I was hoping mm -hmm. to, you know, do both, keep putting money into capital stabilization and also do the, um, increase of the debt payment, because I think that we keep finding ourselves poor in capital and don't have enough money to pay for it. Can we pay for any of this money out of the free cash, Linda? Do we have any free cash? Well, um, we have free cash that was certified last year, about 470,000 of it. We are allocating about 400,000 of it to the budget. And um, that might've shifted there are a few capital, uh, a few free cash articles on the warrant, and I can't come up with that figure right away. Um, but that's pretty much it for free cash. Um, if now that's the amount that was certified last year, we will have free cash certified again as of July one this year, which will come from any overages and returns, uh, unused funds from the current year. Um, now, Amy, last year we put quite a chunk into stabilization fund when we found we had extra money. I think uh, advocating for putting in putting extra funds into uh, ha into capital stabilization this coming fall, if we find ourselves in that kind of situation, I don't think it will be to that extent. But if we find that we've got um, funds available, we could consider starting to replenish the capital. Uh, stabilization fund. Another thing you can do, as some of us have talked about here in town hall, is identify another source of income that you could put into 
direct to the capital stabilization, which is what happened initially with the meals tax. When the meals tax was first collected, it was directed to the capital stabilization fund, and that's why we had that. And when it was redirected into the budget, then that that game was over. And so when I say replace, I mean, that really is, the, it was the next best way of funding capital without going to debt exclusions was doing it through borrowing within the levy. Um, so, so there are some options that I think that need to be discussed over time. Um, and uh, I think Susan's gonna make a suggestion for her uh, idea of a source of revenue, right, Susan? Well, how about in our financial, management team meetings we talked about maybe looking at the cannabis income that's exactly so because that's a new source of income bring that up so because you're right it's a new source and just like the meals tax was years ago you know, then that was diverted away from capital and I, I hate to see this happen it'd be a here's we get a second chance basically to get some funds pushed into the capital area and here we are. So let's maybe think about taking advantage of that. I know that's beyond the scope of our committee, but maybe the finance and the selectmen can weigh in on that. I don't know what you think, David, and what the rest of the board thinks. Well, I can just speak for me. I think it's a great idea because um, you know that, that revenue, especially once the second location opens is only gonna grow. So it's a chance to kind of catch up on some of this stuff without really if taking away from anything else. So. Yeah, we don't know where it's, it is definitely uh, on the rise now, so to speak. And um, it will be, um, yeah, so maybe some parameters could be set. And, and I think the Capital Committee does have uh, the uh, standing to participate in that kind of a discussion. Well, thank you. I would Both. like, I just, uh, I agree with David. I think that it would be a good idea to do that. And um, I'm not, the, as far as the prod, what's on here as a list, all very valid items on here. So I wouldn't question any of those items. Um, where I would question is maybe possibly moving some of, you know, the items that are currently in our operating budget back into this budget, um, instead of using the um, cannabis currently that we're using in the operating budget, could we move the cannabis over now and move those items that we're using to balance in the operating budget and move those items over now as well? I mean, so that they're all still paid, but we could the reason why I like them in the capital is for um, transparency reasons. It's not that they're good, you know, they're good items, but we just, I rather see them through capital because then it's pulled out of line items and you could actually see it and you could see the plan and you could see what it is. And, and the items that I'm thinking of, there's, there's two in mind, one being the, originally I thought, oh, it's great idea to have the cruiser um, the cruisers in the um, operating because it's leased. But as I thought about it again, I almost think the cruisers, even though you're doing a payment and you're making payments, it would be nice to see them in capital so that they are, you can see down the road what we're buying. And just like the fire trucks and like the DPW items, the trucks and all the capital, I, it, it would be nice to be able to see it. So just I'm saying pay it, but it would be kind of good, I think, for transparency reasons and, and to follow it along in a five-year um, plan is to see it paid out of the capital. And then um, same with the fire, that that big ticket item that they have a five-year plan on that, that would be nice to see if we could have that out of here. So I'm just re asking, could we move that 150000 that we have in the cap in the operating budget now from cannabis and move it over to here. And, then, and so if we do that would shift those items back in is what you're saying into the capital budget. Yeah, I'm still saying pay them, but move it from operating to capital. Well, and then along those lines, would would that allow us to go with the lease option for say the loader or you know a truck like that and be able to say in out of the capital budget put the lease payments in there and cover it that way 
that way we could avoid having to go to a ballot. Is that a possibility or is that not allowed? Are they available for leasing, Scott? Yes, they are. I gave you the leasing information on the payloader uh, and on the truck. I did not, but it, it is an option. And I mean, I know, and, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, we're probably going to pay more by doing it that way. You know, a little bit more than our super low interest rates with our own borrowing. Um, but, you know, instead of kicking these things down the road and saying we can't afford to do it now and we'll just keep pushing it off. If we could kind of spread this out over, you know, I, I don't Scott, lease on, say, the payloader. Uh, trying to find that, David. I'm, okay. I'm home and I don't have every you, piece of paper, I don't think. You have like a ballpark? I, I totally for. Give me one second. Let me see if I can bring up the email. Hold on. Hey, hey. Hi. Scott? Scott? Yeah. And also, see if you can find the implied interest rate on those leases. Yeah, I uh, like I said, I know I gave all that documentation to Linda. I'm not sure who would come up with it faster. In, in, an, e in an email? Because I, I wasn't uh, planning on this either. So you're saying it when you emailed it? Yes. Yeah. And, and the reason, you know, let's just say it's, um, I don't know, $35,000 a year for, say, the payloader, right, for the lease payments. Um, I think our capital budget could handle that for what is it a five year lease something like that I, I don't know. I, I have I have the information for you. I found okay. it. Okay. So it looks like there are six different options on the payloader. Uh, three year term, four year term, five year term, and three different other terms. I guess it depending how much money you want to put down, but it looks like it's uh, for a three-year note, uh, two hundred fifty-one thousand dollars. The interest rate is three point three two percent, and it looks like it's three payments of at closing. It, they're looking for eighty-six thousand. And how about for five years? Uh, five years brings it down to 53, it looks like, at closing. And how about the interest rate, the implied interest rate? Uh, that, that is, for five years, it is 3.350%. And is there an annual, like, a service or maintenance fee? Or uh, no, that, like, any kind of maintenance, things like that would be uh on us no i don't mean maintenance on the equipment but oh no it, do, it doesn't look like it it, it is me. linda if i if i email email this to you again right now can you share it or i can so there's a few steps because i'm on a different computer, a lot of but... times you know in my experience through leases end up being more costly not always but more often than not than if um, go out the conventional route yeah and, and don't you know, I'm not saying this is the way, I'm just saying that it, it may be an option to get these two larger pieces of equipment without blowing our entire budget and without having to go to a, you know, a debt exclusion. So don't, don't think that I'm saying we have to go that way. I just, you know, kind of want to see what your thoughts are. I don't, I'm not usually a fan of kind of running up the, uh, putting everything on the, on the credit card and waiting sure. at the same time, <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> Lin Linda, what's your email at work? Treasurer. Treasurer. Thank you. Yeah. Well, no matter how you slice it, we still have to pay it. You know, it's whether it's right. in budget or in the capital budget, whether it's leased or borrowed, it still has to be. You know, I kind of, you know, Amy, you're, I agree with you totally. You know, it probably should be, even though it's if it is a leased item, it still should appear on the capital on the capital uh, request and maybe Linda would have to add a new column as a funding source or not a funding source, but a method of financing or payment. Uh, put leasing on the column? No. A new column? 
for leasing. Yeah. Oh, we have other. We just put it. Uh... But the, the we would still for the money. I'm thinking where the money would come from if we could move the hundred and fifty thousand over that were uh, projected revenues from cannabis. It pulled that out of the operating budgets, respectively, Amy. Well, we would have to pull out the other, the the um, the cruiser and the fire too, because that's we're using that. Right. We need. So it'd be a wash. You pull it out of the operating budget, put it in the capital. Wow. Well, and be close. It is not complete wash, but it'd be. Well, it would be. Enough, it would be enough to pick up the payloader. Yeah, I mean, it would it would cover the at least the lease payment, right? As far as the, the payloader goes. Well, you're losing that money from the budget though. The 50, yeah. I mean, that, it, it, Linda, you know, that money isn't earmarked at currently for the payload or for capital items within the operating budget. Am I hearing you correctly? It's uh, it's earmarked in three, in a, couple, in a few different ways. One is it's earmarked for debt and interest payments, but that's on prior loans. Right. And the other is at what Amy's talking about, there's items that are in the budget now that are actually capital. So, so if you have a hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, income that you, cannabis income, and I, I think that's a little high, I'm, I'm not on that page. Um, and a hundred thousand dollars worth of expenses that you're taking out of the fire budget was that about ninety eight or eighty or something like that? So that would be a that would be an even move over if you move over the same amount. So mm -hmm. that and it's not earmarked. I mean, it's not. I mean, it, but it, it equals it equals. Mm -hmm. But it, but if you go on and add on more capital to be uh, them, you what you're doing is taking the extra cannabis amount out of the funding that we have already allocated for the budget for non capital items. Right in the right. budget for non-capital items. Right, right, right. right. Okay. So, well, and, and we and we don't know you're going to direct this. I mean, you're you know you've got you've got the finance committee and the select board all who have to kind of discuss where the the income is going to go. I think it's a good plan. That's why I was thinking that you're you're really gearing up towards how you might change this in the fall. But um, I'm not sure. I don't know that we can really do that at this point for the budget we're putting forth in a few weeks. Yeah, Take and, a revenue and, and out, and say we're going to send it over to capital instead. We really haven't. I mean, there's a lot of people who need to participate in that discussion. Right. And we talked, I know you and I talked about the drainage proposal that, that could, could have been a candidate for ARPA funds. The drainage, uh, we are, well, uh, Carolyn's, Carolyn's on now. She has, a, we have some similar DPW highway water items that are going to be funded, hopefully. Uh, she's bringing up a select board next week. We have some things that hopefully we'll be able to get out of, out of ARPA funding. Um, that's really just coming up right now. But the drainage, this, I don't know what this drainage, I don't know how this drainage project Scott, what's on here for eighty-five thousand dollars? How that relates to what we've been talking about with the culverts? I'm real. It's not really my area. It's not the same thing, is it? It's uh, the drainage we propose for the eighty-five thousand. It's it's just for engineering costs for uh, Breckenridge Road, Huntington Road, and French Street, where we have major major draining drainage problems. And we're starting to impact people's uh, residents' personal property uh, with our road water. And to, tr to figure out how to make it fixed, the first step is to have it engineered and have bid docs documents even go out to bid to see how much it's going to cost. Right. And, and, and am I understanding correctly, once you have engineering, that it's eligible for some other funding too, such as that committee you and Bill are? No. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it possibly could be, but you have to uh, go through the motions, of course, with it. But engineering and having documentation is the first step because we, mm -hmm. we don't know how much money to even ask for. Right. And if any if any grants or anything come up, you're you're uh, you should be shovel ready. So that that is having the engineering done. So oh, yeah, I'm wondering, would engineering be an eligible part for 
expenditure? Well, ARPA, I think we think of it in terms of accomplishing the project. Uh, but we don't know what the cost is, so I, I don't the, know that we can put it. Engineering any... is most certainly a part of the project. Yeah. It's not shovels in the ground, but it's like any capital project, any major construction project, you have to have engineering and or architectural. But that, that is one of the smaller items, though, that we uh, that we can do within the levy. It's not like a, what we're really what our big issues here are the payloader and the, and the sander and whether to do the override or find some other means of. So with one of those hearings, it could be funded with marijuana money. Well, remember right now we have the cannabis funds in the in for our FY23 revenues. It's part of what we have it already, it is directed as a revenue. So it is directed towards the revenue. So you have to don't do some deconstructing here before you reconstruct. Um, Linda, we don't have the second host agreement in, but it, that's not big dollars either, right? <laughs> trying to find what we 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 won't see that second host agreement for a while. They're still not they're still not up and running yet. So I thought but that was I, like put off for like a month and a half. So it keeps yeah. having extensions, okay. but it's not going to be a big money maker next year. I, okay. I wouldn't count on it as a huge revenue source. It's been a little unorganized start. So all the current marijuana money is spoken for. Right. So we've collected almost uh, well, $95,000 this year from the excise, and we did project $150,000 into 20. But I believe that we are anticipating that second project, which is correct. It's not really, uh, it's not, that's not real yet. Uh, well, if that's the case, then I don't see any other alternatives. Unless you folks can come up with something other than a debt exclusion vote. Well, what, what I didn't know what's in the um, all the free cash. You said we use, we're using four hundred thousand for to balance the budget for free cash, um, and there's another seventy thousand in free cash. There are some free cash articles. I couldn't remember, Carolyn. I don't have the warrant here. What we are—we have some either some articles that are funded out of free cash. Uh, the, I don't think. Yeah, the prior bill. Well, at least twenty-five thousand. And that's sixty sixty-five thousand for the street yeah. lights. Yeah, I mean we're over <laughs> there too. So, Paul, can uh, maybe can we hit some of the the low hanging fruit here first and decide on some of these easy items, and then we can kind of take a maybe a hard look at how we're gonna if or if we're gonna make the the big ticket items at the end happen? Because mm -hmm. I think some of this uh, the smaller stuff is kind of you know like like this. Yeah. Well, why don't we, uh, while well, we got Scott here, then why don't we hit water and sewer? Yeah. And then we can go back. Okay, let's uh, look at water. Anybody have any questions about any of those issues that uh, Scott presented to us last week? Any comments? And these are funded from water reserves. Yeah, borrowing to be paid back from water reserves. How about, uh, why don't we do department, we can vote on these department by department if everyone's okay with that rather than item by item. Sure. Okay, do I have a motion to accept the two water articles as presented? So moved. Second. Second, any further discussion? You said two? Yes. Can you name them? It's the Ford truck and the uh, water hydrant. Uh, no, we're, uh, no, oh, we're in the blue oh, section. Yeah, sorry. Okay, now I see what's going Three. on. Great. That's what we did at special town meeting. 
I don't have that color version that you get. Yeah, you oh, okay. <laughs> it is a scroll down. My apologies. Yep. It's the Callahan well filters, propane tanks, and the Mount Warner, the Mount Warner project. So let's, again, a, a motion on those. Any other, dis, do we have a motion to approve them? A motion to accept all the, the water department items. Second. Okay. Now, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, the water articles pass. Now we will move on to the sewer. There, there are two items there for the roofs and the and those items are coming out of sewer reserves. So do we have a motion to approve? Make the motion. Oh, okay, second. All right, Amy. <laughs> All right. Bye. Any, any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, the sewer items have passed. And... Uh, do you want to move on to the schools and then we'll jump back to highway? Yeah, I think this that should be quick too. Yeah, there's four items for the school. And Chris is here as well, if we have anything from him. Oh, okay. Got the uh, screen and the network equipment. And scanners, projectors, screens, carpeting, and uh, any other discussion? I have a question for Chris since he is here. Um, do you, I wonder, because I haven't seen it and I don't know if they disbanded or what, but the um, Hadley Helping Hearts, because a lot of, a lot of um, technology was funded through Hadley Helping Hearts. I just curious if they're still in existence or if they're still, um, you're still able to get any funding from them anytime, not, and maybe not just for this, I'm just curious about that. Yeah, I have to be honest, I haven't heard from them in a couple of years. So I honestly don't know if they're still in existence or not. They had kind of taken over the purchasing of, they used to just send us a check and we would split it between the two buildings and and you know use it for those two buildings and then they kind of took it where the teachers or staff members would request items from them and they would handle all of the ordering and everything um mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of been a while really since i've been involved with them i can certainly ask um the superintendent if they are still in existence i honestly don't know yeah i know they haven't done their 5k fundraiser since before COVID, so they might right. not have any funds on it's hand three years ago my facebook photo just came up <laughs> oh, it's, th it's been three years since they since we've been so okay. the other, i think that was their major fundraiser too so if they're not doing that um yeah. like the, the crafts fair for the mother's club for a while there it's a, that's their major thing and if we, they couldn't hold the race so i don't know Thank you. Well, all these items are coming, they're being funded from within the levy, and I will entertain a motion to approve. Not motion all to approve. <laughs> Second. All right. Any further discussion? <laughs> call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. And the CPA, uh, actually, we don't really, should we approve these? Because it's really. I have a question. Yeah. CPA. Go ahead, so, Amy. Um, <coughs> a articles that are is here is the historical signs for $7,000. Right. Um, they were not able to get that through CPA. Um, so, 
and we don't really have it. You know, it's kind of difficult right now in the operating budget, and it is a one-time thing. It's for their project. Is there any way we can look at putting it in the capital? Well, why? It's on here, though. It's a funding source. Uh, I, 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 I thought you had said, Amy, like when we were talking that it was something that was controversial, but it was going to be approved. But I, I'm not sure they even ended up coming to you. So I mis misunderstood something there, but it seems like. I thought that too, I guess I'm off. Um, I did think that it was controversial, I guess. And then and then when, I when we talked about it in the, um, so I kind of thought it was gonna go through, but then, and when we talked about it in our operating budget and they came, historical came to us and they said that they weren't able to do it. I thought, no, maybe I was off. So I said, oh, okay. So it was something that they, cause I know that they, they were having troubles through our operating budget. I thought, well, it's not really, I, we can't put 7,000 in their operating budget. You know, I kind of think that the project should be done. I just don't know how to get it funded. I don't know which spot. I think it's going to be repackaged for CPA. It's it's def, it's it's right up CPA's alley, really, with the whole historical business. And they, I think, they need to. Um, we've talked about the possibility of repackaging it, or they are talking about it. Um, after it was brought up at your meeting at the finance committee, when Dylan was going on about the uh, the recordings and the maps and all this other things, and it's like. It is, and and the objection had been from from some on your committee that it was buying signs and it was just about signs, but apparently it's a part of part of an entire historical uh, uh, project, which might make them, which should uh, which should answer some of the concerns that it's strictly about buying new signs as opposed to rest restoration or enhancing past historical um artifacts or locations in our town so okay so but i don't but you don't but cpa is not meeting again on it before annual town meeting i don't know why it never got brought forward to cpa is too bad did it did mary send it in an r is it on the is it on the warrant did mary send it he didn't i guess so does this have to be removed then well i haven't seen the warrant so i don't know what's on the warrant you should you don't have the warrant we sent the warrant you sent it to finance? Yeah. It was okay. last, last week, last Wednesday? Yeah. So okay. can I address, I can address the historical signs. So there's a place. Does this have to be removed then if it wasn't approved off of our budget? Oh yeah, we don't have, you don't have to uh, discuss anything on CPA. Is this informational? Informational yeah. only. Yeah. It yeah. is in the, it is on the warrant right now as a placeholder. But I talked to Diana and I explained to her that I think it would be appropriate for her to um, have an official meeting with the CPA during over the summer before the special town meeting to see if if it, it they they've never they never have formally sat with CPA to discuss it. So she understands that it might be better for it to wait until the fall. Okay. So I can just indicate on here, hold, hold for, uh, hold. I think they're holding it for fall. Okay. I hate to just remove things. Yeah, because they might not ever come back up. <laughs> <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> can, so right. can I can I ask a a, a newbie question? Um, is it historically you don't put a purchase like that on the operating budget when it's that low? If it's a, we wouldn't put something like that, like you're talking about the signs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if it like was one sign and they do it on a regular basis, but that's more of a project. And so, yeah, so a project like that for signs or a one-time thing that usually goes through capital. Um, and yeah, yeah, and there's no threshold, right? For capital, you don't have a threshold for a certain amount that goes to capital. Well, because I, this is just a newbie question. There is a threshold according to our bylaw, but we've always gone below that. It's twenty five thousand dollars. It is actually in the bylaw. Yeah, because seven thousand is extremely low, and, and and you would see that it's that's not an um, 
uncommon that you would see that in an operating budget and noting that it's a one-time expense because because it's so low. I'm just I'm just uh, throwing that out there and also learning more about. You well, know, maybe happening. because of a funding source too, it's CP CPI money, so uh, CPA money. But we've done a lot of in the past. I mean, I think it's just I didn't even realize we had a threshold because we've purchased things like the counter in town hall. We've done the ticket boost for the for the uh, clerk. We've done um, like just furniture. Um, we've done computers. We've done things that are much we've done a lot of small items, especially for town hall in our capital. Right, and, and in context of town hall budgets, they are large items. And they're, they're, you wouldn't put any of those items in our budgets. We're not, uh, yeah, it's all relative. Yeah. yeah, so, and I recognize you wouldn't put a CPA funded thing in the operating budget. And that's why, I mean, and I know um, Linda and I have talked a lot about it. And, and we, we have seen persons in other communities for, Signage, sign, signage that are markers for certain buildings or locations or something that happened historically on that site that have fallen under CPA. It is their decision ultimately, but I think as Linda has suggested, listening to Dylan, it might, might make sense in the fall to bring the project to as that it is a complete project. It's actually like an audible tour that it goes together and it may make more sense to present it to CPA. Um, and maybe it fits their, um, you know, their purpose more appropriately if it's presented that way. Plus they have that big overflowing bank account over there. So versus mm -hmm. uh, our capital. There's that. There's that. So true. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of things through, um, I wish we could do through CPA. And a lot of times, a lot of it all gets passed through Stewart out in Boston and there, he's the one that tells them, oh, it's not good. This isn't, you're going to have troubles. You're going to have troubles. But, you know, just for an example, the painting of the town hall, because we painted it once, you can't put it through CPA again. You know, that town hall needs another paint job. And that's a big concern and things like that. So right. it's, it, it's tough. Well, ultimately, it's up to our CPA committee in our, in our town how we want to spend the money. So, I mean, there are, that's an advising group. He's not, you know, the, he's part of an advisory group. He's not connected with the state or with the department. Mm. So. And speaking for capital planning, I think, I know we don't really vote on these, but it's good to get all this for informational purposes, just to keep us in the loop on it. On what's going on with the uh, CPA expenditures as far as capital items are concerned. Yeah, I just felt bad. I just only mentioned the signs because I felt bad for them. I, all that work that they do, they put in a lot of, it's a committee that puts in all this work and then they get passed from, um, you know, committee to committee. Sorry, we can't do it. Sorry, we can't do it. And I'm like, oh, these people really, <laughs> they don't know where to go. So I, you know, I just want to make it happen for them. I mean, any I, other comments on CPA items? Before I would we just say that, you know, I'd be in favor of uh, in the fall, if I'm still here to, to support paying for it out of capital, uh, you know, if CPA says, no, we absolutely can't do it because I think it does need to be done. I think it's important. But if, if there's a way to get it done out of CPA, you know. It's a worthy project and it's, uh, mm, it's amazing. a fairly insignificant amount too. Mm. Maybe we should have a road race. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> From sign to sign. Yeah. Maybe it's about ten thousand dollars in those roads, road races. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, jump back to highway then and uh, continue our discussion there and see if we can come to a resolution on that too. So on the mower, um, if I can make a, a motion to approve the mower because that's within the levy. And I think it, it's something that, you know, obviously we absolutely need. Well, do you want to do the mower and the uh, drainage, David? 
they're both within the levy. I think we already had a discussion. I brought up the issue about ARPA funds, but yeah, okay. So we can we can do both those. That make it easy. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the drainage project and the uh, mower? Yes. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of approving these two items signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. So now we are left with the two items that will be subject to an override. Let's hear from everyone what your thoughts are. Is Do we roll, roll the dice and take a chance or <laughs> we come up with an alternative? So is there a way to pursue both of these items um, through an override and through the lease option as well? And the reason I ask that is that way, if, uh, if an override fails, we could go all town meeting. Can you pursue it in both those paths and maybe not necessarily spend the money twice? If that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying, David. I'm wondering if, you know, from a legal standpoint, yeah, would it be considered like a, a duplicate appropriation in a way mm -hmm. for the same item. Right. We're asking for a debt exclusion. And what you're saying, if that fails, then we go to plan B, which would be the lease option. Right. That way, That's at least the you know, Scott can bank on one way or another, he might get a piece of equipment first. I'm wondering, uh, you know, this might be a town council question, if an article could be structured in such a way as to reflect that, you know, like a contingency, if the debt ex exclusion does not pass, then- So the what's, what's the, what's the goal? A lease option, mm. the purchase. The goal is to- I know to get it, but items. the goal is to get the annual payment down to an amount that you can slip slip through without a debt exclusion. Right. Let's okay. have Dan talk. Say again. If, if you have a debt exclusion scheduled and you already have an alternate funding source, it's not going to pass. It's a waste of right. time. So, and also, where's that money going to come from? You know, so we have 655,000 between the two of those, all right? 400,000, 255,000. If we just, if we go the five year, no, let's go, let's go to, we can go the 10 year, no, what do you think? Five, 10 year route on those. Sorry, I have to turn a call down. Um, I'm sure they'd be eligible for a 10 year. Okay. So, if, if it was five, we would be doing 131,000 we're looking for in an, this year. And if we go 10 year, and I'm just doing principal, just, just let's not bother with interest because it takes more calculations. And we already know that the interest rate on the borrowing is going to be lower than the interest rate on the leasing. So let's just compare principles. So if we take the 131,000, which would be over five years and divide that by two, so we're looking for 65,500 in an annual budget to cover the payments of, of 10 years worth on these equipment. So Amy, looking for $65,500 and not bothering with all of the lease by doing it this way and looking for 65,000 more in the borrowing line or of the budget, Mm -hmm. But Linda, we could borrow half, within the levy. Only half of that would come. Um, right. You have fifty percent coming out of water. That's right, Paul. That's right. So we're really only looking for like thirty, thirty-two thousand five hundred thirty, like less than thirty-five thousand added right. to the budget to enable the purchase of forty-two thousand 
750 would be I'll tell you bar borrowing within a levy is a real it's a it's it's a good deal and it's a very worthwhile way to add to it and I completely also agree with what, what Amy's saying about allocating and uh, things income and to this capital stabilization but I'm not sure that that's going to help us solve our problem right the issue right here uh, that's something to look for for the fall and get get something into place with some recommendations to how to handle that but so are you saying you know take um and i think we were increasing the um amount of the um what we were paying and increasing it by another hundred thousand or we were increasing it or we did increase it by a hundred thousand what we paid for our payments right yeah maybe increase it a little bit more and we could pull from if we had to maybe something like OPEP or something, or I don't know. We can figure that out. Yeah, that's the, that's the yeah, that's another committee. Um, yeah. But. But. Yeah. So if I, yeah, I mean that's a crazy amount to borrow within the levy. We're talking about it all combined there, eight hundred and. Oh no, I I, I was doing the total for the year, but. Um, yeah, that's adding 327. If I think of that as borrowing over 10 years over rather than over five, we're cutting that down. It's the equivalent of, and the way I plan, it's more like borrowing another 150,000. 32,750 a year. Pretty good. Scott, what's the life expectancy for, say, a loader like that? It's got to be, what, 15, 20 years, something like that? Hopefully. I, I, I would hope you get 20 years plus. I mean, the, the biggest the thing with us, David, is... The one of 84? Yeah. <laughs> I uh, mean, seriously. Uh, I, I mean, obviously, David, the biggest thing with us is uh, putting it in the salt pile. When when right. when it goes into the salt, it's uh, the most corrosive, you know, uh, environment you, you could ever dream of. Uh, so with that being said, I mean, we, we clean it the best we can. We... we do the preventive maintenance the best we can, and it, you should easily get 20 years. So the reason I talk in terms of 10 and under is because that's what we can do with the short-term notes. But we are going to, in the next few years, we're going to need to be rolling things into a bond given some of the upcoming purchases, I believe. If we're going to talk, let's say we're talking about a DPW building where we're doing there. So we're talking about maybe doing three years worth of these payments and then putting the balance into the bond that we might get to acquire the DPW building. And then with a bond, we can extend it out for 20 years. Well, not an additional 20 years, but an additional whatever is left on the 20 year at that point when we go to a bond. And so there is a way to kick this down and it might work out better. There's no guarantees. Um, but we are talking about equipment that's needed pretty badly, Scott. Yes, I would say that it is. It it's yes, it it's extremely needed. It, we are we are failing. Uh, the payloader, uh, the one we have two. Uh, they both break down. The oldest one that we're looking on replacing, and the the. Uh, and trading in, we haven't got any numbers on that yet because I didn't want them to come out and do all that if we're not moving forward with this project. But just take that into consideration too that there will be some uh, money in a in a trade with that vehicle. Uh, but yeah, they're 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 old, they're rotting away. Uh, replacement parts are hard to get for them, especially the the, the oldest of them. Uh, it, it's just kind of getting close to beyond repair. Uh, the truck, uh, it, it, it's in tough shape. Uh, and not that new vehicles or equipment don't break down, but, uh, it, you know, you're hoping it's less. Like last, last year with the truck, instead of being out on the road sanding, we're in the garage making repairs on it through a snowstorm because it's breaking down. And some of our breakdowns 
are due to uh, rot and rust because the vehicle is just uh, wore out. It's rotted out. We, we thoroughly looked at the truck to see if we could at least just try to save some money and put a new body on it the, mm -hmm. and go down that route. But uh, looking at the truck, the frame is starting to fail. Uh, there's, there in, it's just, once again, kind of, it's just one of those things. Like I said, they, they live in a harsh environment. They, they usually don't leave the garage on the sunny days. It, it's in the winter time when it's snowing out and freezing and we need to be responding. And unfortunately this year, our first outing with that ice storm, I mean, I, I don't, we, we had problems. One of our, one of our top, you know, go-to vehicles was in the truck broke down. So we were relying on our oldest of the fleet and our, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know how to tell the residents that how desperate we need for this. Uh, when they're, when they're calling our office, you know, Hey, where are you know, my road slippery? You know, I can't get out. Uh, you know, I'm stranded, you know, when we're in the garage broke down, we're not out in the streets. It, it's, and, and it's bad. It, and I, I hate to say it. We have two trucks in the same condition. One of them, we're trying to nurse as much as we can, but this one here is starting to get beyond repair. And they're big ticket items. I I started at three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. Talking to the salesman, the prices, everything are going to the roof that fast. He said, "You you are starting to get close to you're, you're going to be over budget on three fifty. It's not enough." And this this is what happens: the longer the town waits, the more it's going to cost. And and how far out are they from actually? Like if you ordered it tomorrow, uh, you're you're talking that the truck is over a year to get. So, so we won't be we won't be borrowing in twenty three. Right, the the truck is over the year, and the payloader we've only looked at one manufacturer and one option at the time they are on, you know, state contract. But uh, again, depending uh supply and demand at the time when we talked about it, he had one available and he, they asked if they should hold it for us. And I'm not going to tell a, a dealer to hold something for us on a maybe. So uh, with that being said, I haven't talked to him in quite some time. I'm not sure right. if it's available right away or not. Uh, so that's another thing that, that may be a little time out depending on the availability. Yeah. Well, but definitely on the truck, you're talking Linda, a, a year or better. The, the uh, chassis of the truck, from what I'm being told, we, we couldn't even order it till September. Okay, so that pushes the borrowing out, even the beginning of the borrowing, out further. So then we're talking about trying to find $15,000 instead of... 30. Yeah, I'm, I don't know that we can count on that, though, David. I mean, as you said, if one's available, but I mean, the, I mean, the, realistically, that might fall out, it might not cost us uh, for a while. I mean, we'd have to certainly know that it's there. Um, and, you know, the, obviously, the bigger discussion about the cannabis funds, but, you know, based on what we're seeing from the first location and their revenues, yeah. you would hope we would see something similar with the second location. So that might take care of a good chunk of that we might, we that might rescue us then um so i mean we could we could take that chance can we take the chance though of the of going to debt exclusion that'd be great to get the extra money in to pay for it what if it doesn't pass i honestly don't think uh think it's gonna it's just just you know could be way off but just the the rumblings around town it, <laughs> Just, yeah, I, I don't think likewise, you know, I, I echo what David said. I, what I hear from people too is good luck. And, well, I agree. Values are going up um, based on sales from the last two years. 
it, it, it's going to be tough to, to get anything through debt exclusion. So, mm -hmm. Especially on such short notice. And by the way, it has to be in by this Friday. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it still has to pass town meeting. And we still have time to work this out and make a uh, make the case. I suppose you could put the question on for the election. Would you, you know, it, the debt exclusion of X amount of dollars, if it passes, woohoo. If it doesn't, well, we have to figure something out differently. If we go back the next year. And or fall town meeting. Or fall and amend it. If you come up with an alternative funding source. Well, you know, we can always back, have to be. backfill, as David is saying, if you, once you get the cannabis in or we start funding that, we certainly, uh, the capital plan, capital stabilization. Well, no, I guess once we borrow, it's coming out of a, a certain location. We can't backfill at that point, but I don't well, know. I, I, I think it might be worth a try. Worth just seeing what happens. Are the borrowing... Uh rates just as good as they were, but some rates are going up. That's up to uh, you people, Paul. <laughs> they're going up, Amy. And <laughs> the short term I hear is going up more than the longer term. The short term is really going up rapidly, but long term is going to go up also. And it's only going to go up more. You know, we all, all of us heard what the feds are going to be doing by the end of the year and early next year too. So expect some significantly higher rates it's like you said linda especially on the short term i've seen them more than double on short term already yeah from their low point we're going to see them more than double on our investment accounts <laughs> down the road i wish so um but keep in mind double in municipal is not like double on our on our uh, credit cards it's still, right it's still not bad um, <laughs> So what I'm thinking though is still they're I mean they're still good compared to yep uh, and so I'm thinking the more we can borrow right now before because it's only going to go up and up and up the more we can borrow now that this is the time to borrow um, if we're going to borrow um, well the long term rates will go up but it won't be in lockstep with the short term rates yeah so, so where are we left here. I almost rather see it uh, borrow now and and pay it and and do that and 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 authorize Linda to do more and borrow now and then yep. take advantage of these low interest rates while we have them before the, the train leaves leaves the station. Well, I won't still won't borrow until we actually have it if it's 18 months out and we're not going to uh, we're not going to borrow until we Get it, but so we're not borrowing in 22, and doesn't sound like we might not be borrowing in 23. And remember, we don't pay anything back until the year after we borrow. Well, you'd so go with a little band. Right? 24. And wouldn't you go with a band, Linda, for a while? Yeah, I'd have to. Yeah, I'd have to until we're ready for a bond. We're not ready for a bond yet. We only have a, we only have about a million and a half. So, Amy, are you saying that? When you're saying let's borrow, you're talking about shifting it over to within the le levy limit. Oh, I was thinking about borrow, yeah, shifting, you know, borrowing more out of the levy and then paying, you know, if we have to increase that line item to pay more, to borrow more. I don't know. I think if we push it, keep pushing it back and <clears throat> put it in debt exclusion, it fails, then we're just going to come back and be trying to do the same thing and it's just pushing it off longer. I worry about that. That makes sense. We'll be back doing what we're talking about a year or two years from now. So we're going to have to really get some good, get the figures together for town meeting because that's that's a lot to have borrowing within the levy. But I think that we just need to lay it out and say this is this is the best way to go. Yeah, and how many? You know, after a while, too, Linda. I know you want to keep it at what you say three fifty every year. Um, Four fifty. Or 450, but eventually, too, you got to think about increasing it as much as none of us want to do it because you have our good friend, Mr. Inflation, coming into play with all this, too. And so you can't 
we can't keep it at one figure right ever you know we have to increase it it has to be indexed eventually right just and, like and the fact we don't want to do it but it's just I, like our, I know. our own personal finances we have to we just um, have to face the figures and deal with it right right well um yeah, I well, then, uh, we can try. You can try. Well, then. I just don't think it's going to go through debt exclusion. So I just want, I'm trying to be realistic. I just don't feel like it'll go. So what do we, you know. And if you really need it. Now, Scott came up with a great idea. I remember here talking, hearing him say it before about like, and he said he has two payloaders and one of them, uh, they're both bad, but he gets a new one. Then maybe the, the other one that's failing, we can rent and put the rented one into the salt pile down the road. Or or even even if we needed it, could we rent it now, Scott, if we needed to rent one? Yeah, we can. I, I was just trying to get you a little bit of a time frame. It looks like with this particular vendor, a machine would probably be about six months out. A rental, I'm not sure what his stock is on that, but I, I was talking to Carolyn and David, and I mentioned this to Amy too. Uh, if if we were to buy this machine or whatever, and especially David was talking about how long it's going to last, I would strongly suggest to the town that in the winter time, these vendors have what they call winter, where the town should be really looking at a rental for the winter time. Where we're in our salt pile, loading trucks, pushing up salt, et cetera, we're using a rental. And you get it get December 1st and March 31st, they come and pick it back up. So we're not putting our $250,000 machine into the salt pile. We're putting a rental in there. Uh, and it's going to prolong the life of that tremendously. If you, it's like going on a long trip, I guess you rent the car and you come back, you give it back to them. You don't put the mileage on your car. Uh, obviously there's a cost with that, but I think long-term you would, you know, we'd, we'd save that the loader instead of 20 years, you probably get 30 years out of it just because it's not going to be in the salt pile. But I it is. Stop it is by like, my office and explain what putting it in the salt means. <laughs> well, when we when we go into the salt, you know the, the salt we have to it, the salt comes in it on trucks, so they can't get into our salt shed far enough to dump it. So we have to push the salt into the, the salt shed and pile it up. And when doing that, salt goes in every nook and cranny of that vehicle. And then obviously when we're going out salting, we have to go into the salt and load the trucks out. So it's in there again, scooping the salt into the bucket and then loading it into the truck. So it's, okay. it's into the salt a lot. And uh, when the salt is dry, it's not a problem. It's when it gets wet, it starts doing its thing. And obviously when it's throwing out, it's wet. So like it, you know, just long-term thinking down the road that if we do things differently, we might be able to get 30 years out of machine instead of, you yeah. know, 18. I, and, and then like at looking at talking about the truck, uh, we, we years ago, I guess, Hadley was, had Mack trucks. Probably if, you, if you're a construction person, you know, Mack truck is, like the Cadillac of trucks. And for whatever reason, they switched to international. They're cheaper and they're cheaper for a reason. And we're having trouble with our brand new international trucks. Right? We have literally right now two at the dealership trying to get fixed. So we were looking at going back to buying something of more quality, hoping that your repair costs will be less uh, Downtime will be less. It will, we will get a better product long term. It's going to cost a little more money up front, but down the road, hopefully, it holds together better and longer. How how much Scott did you is would a winter rental be? 
do you think? I'm not sure what the rates are. I mean, they change all the time. It, it's it's not cheap. It, I don't know, a couple of grand a month. So, but like I said, it, it'll save you long term. I'm not sure. That might be a high number. I'd have to look. Uh, it's something that it, it goes to the Franklin County bid, a lot of that. So it, it is, you know, bid out. It's a bidding process too. So, okay. So what's our what's our motion on these two? Well, why don't we? Uh, is everyone in favor of moving these from uh, debt exclusion to within the levy? Yes. Okay. Then why don't we entertain a motion to approve these two articles, uh, subject to being moved over from a debt exclusion vote to within the tax levy? So moved. We have a second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes and that concludes our capital items for this year. So any other business that anyone has? The only other thing quickly, uh, uh, I was thinking, uh, Linda, is there any chance sometime a few months that maybe we can get a five-year projection or do you want to wait until we get all the requests coming in? Um, actually, Carol and I, we briefly went over it. I mean, next year's is seven million. The year after that is five million. Like we said, like we were talking about in between meetings, Paul, is we have a bit of a traffic jam with all, everything that has been piling up over the years and not being dealt with, not the years, the last two years. Um, so um, we will sort through that. Some of the items on there, uh, I, I have I have the list. It's 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 done. It has to be reworked, um, and uh, we, we will talk since so much of it is DPW, and we're meeting with Scott on Thursday, and we'll see if we can trim some of that out. His priorities are probably not what prior directors were, so. Um, it certainly can be part of the process going into fall. That, people, that all department heads be requested, again, not just to make the upcoming requests, but a five-year plan. But in the meantime, we can take the, the plan that already exists and sort through it with the, with the um, re related uh, department heads. Right. So we can, we can work we on that. We talked about shifting the entire process by six months right. over two. Mm -hmm. And so, Carolyn, you'll be getting some notices out in probably, what, June or July for all the mm -hmm. department heads? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Does this committee want to re uh, request the finance committee uh, increase the um, debt and interest payment line? Uh, yeah, I can, we can carry the message. I don't know if you need a, uh, uh, you want to, or did you want to vote? Uh, you wanted a, a vote on that? Well, I don't know if we need a, a vote or it's implied by the fact that we moved it over from debt exclusion. Yeah, just to make that request. But I think I think we can convey it well enough and explain. I think it is the best. Financially, it makes the most sense. Okay. The most, achievable, most achievable alternative. Yep. Okay, any other business? Hearing none, I'll call for a motion to close the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. And uh, thank you very much, everyone, for your attendance and especially your participation.